So this is our fourth and final week of our foundation series. The first week, Pastor Maggie talked about how Jesus was born into this world, the foundation of love, God sending Jesus so that we would have a way to relate to God. The second week of the series, I preached about how Jesus died on the cross. And when Jesus died on the cross, how Jesus put to death all the things in our lives that need to be put to death, all of the brokenness and sin. And then Pastor Taylor preached about Jesus' resurrection, which is the way that we can have freedom and a new start and a path forward out of our sin and brokenness. And then today, this is the fourth foundational story that we can build our faith on. Jesus gives his followers an assignment, a mission that we call the Great Commission. Now, to share this story of how Jesus' love was, has been reaching out into this world and how followers have been bearing witness, I want to share a story of how one person received this story. It is a soldier in Ireland. Um, I recently read a book called About Face by Bethany Barnett, who is a local author, and I happened to go to college with her, but she lived in Ireland for many years, and she has family members who served in the military, and so she heard stories of Irish soldiers and their experience in the military, and she shared their powerful stories in this book. Now, the story I want to share with you is a hard story to hear, but it is an important story, so I invite you to sit tight and hold on through it. But this is about a real person, a soldier named Kevin Burke, who served in the Irish Army starting in the 1980s. And he was sent to Lebanon as part of a UN peacekeeping mission, and he was only 19 years old. Early on in his mission, one night after he'd gone to sleep, he was suddenly awakened by the sound of an explosion, and then another, and then another. It was RPGs, rocket-propelled grenades, and he couldn't tell who was firing them or where they were coming from. His commanding officer yelled, get up, get out, go, 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 into the orange grove, keep your heads down. Now everything in Kevin wanted to stay put. He wanted to stay in the protective shelter of that concrete building. Against his intuition, he left cover. He and his fellow soldiers dove out into the orange grove. Running out into the open was the most counterintuitive thing for him. The building felt safe and protective, but it was brittle and its walls crumbled. If he had stayed inside, he would have been crushed. The soft ground of the orange grove absorbed the majority of the impact from the RPGs. Lying in the open orange grove saved his life. Later on in that same tour, on another night, something even more terrible happened to him. He woke up after falling asleep being attacked, not by enemies or enemy fire, but by one of the highest ranked non-commissioned officers in his unit. He was beaten and assaulted sexually. He could hardly make sense of what was happening to him. And after it happened, he was so angry and there was no recourse. And this officer had, was somebody that he had to regularly see, salute, and show respect to. And this ate him up with anger and with shame. And the rest of his tour was agony for him. He turned to drinking to cope. And when he went home many months later, he kept drinking and eventually his drinking got out of control. And eventually he had to add all sorts of other drugs so that he could just be numb all the time. But he was still angry all the time and he couldn't even remember why. Over the years, he ended up losing contact with his wife and his children because of his violent outbursts. He had joined a motorcycle, an outlaw motorcycle group, but yet even in this group of outlaws, eventually he got kicked out because he was too volatile with his temper. And they told him if they ever saw him again, they'd kill him. 
He lived like this for almost 20 years until he checked himself into rehab. After rehab, he was trying anything he could to find a stable footing. And he found a Bible and he tried to read it all by himself. But when he was all by himself, it didn't make sense. Then one day, he saw two other members of the outlaw motorcycle group. And these two guys had also served with him in the army. And he thought they were going to attack him. But instead, they got closer and they put their hands up. And they said, we've changed. We've become Christian. And instead of jumping him, they invited him to church. And it was in church where he finally was able to start wrestling with his anger. The anger that he'd held that was connected to that attack that he had survived so many years before. And he felt that Jesus was prompting him to forgive his attacker. Not because what that man did was okay. It was not okay. But because forgiveness would save his life. He said not forgiving was like drinking poison and waiting for your enemy to get sick. And yet he'd been drinking that poison himself for so long and he was getting sicker in his heart, in all of his broken relationships, in his barely able to function life. When Kevin told his story to author Bethany Barnett in About Face, he said that on the way to forgiveness, he started to compare forgiveness to that experience he had in the RPG attack. During that attack, Kevin had wanted to stay sheltered in the concrete building instead of going out into the open. The concrete building in Lebanon had felt safe, and he realized that for 20 years, he had taken cover within the brittle walls that he had built of bitterness. Bitterness also felt safe for him. It felt comfortable and familiar. It had become a huge part of his life and even a huge part of his personality. Forgiveness, on the other hand, felt counterintuitive, even risky. And the more he wrestled with his faith over time, it was like his new commander, Jesus, was saying, go, 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 out into the open and forgive. And as he stepped out into forgiveness, Jesus began to absorb the anger and the fear of all those years, like how the soft ground of the orange grove took the impact of those explosions from the RPGs. He found some safe spaces in his church and he, to tell his story. He found some people to walk with him, to help him continue in the direction towards forgiveness and not to turn back towards vengeance. And eventually he said he felt something that he hadn't felt in years, peace. He found peace. The first words that Jesus said to the disciples when he saw them after he'd been raised from the dead was peace. Peace be with you. They thought that they were seeing a ghost. When they saw Jesus die on the cross some days before, they thought that the Roman Empire had won and that they were banished to fear. But that wasn't the end of the story. The living, breathing Jesus showed up in the middle of their fear, and the first word he said to them was peace. Then he showed them his wounded hands and feet, the wounds he carried from his crucifixion on the cross, and they touched him. He let them touch those wounds so that they could see he was real. And to give them even more reassurance that he wasn't a ghost, he ate a piece of fish just so they, they could see he wasn't a ghost. He was a real living person standing before them. This was the Jesus that they had come to know. And once they were convinced that he was real, he gave them a mission. Sometimes we call this the Great Commission, this mission to go and share the good news of Jesus, to bear witness to what they'd experienced with Jesus. Jesus tells them to go and share all the things that they'd heard and seen and learned from him. 
Jesus told them that because of his death and resurrection, that they could go and proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins to the whole world in Jesus' name. Now, Christians have not always done a good job with this mission, and we need to admit that. There have been beautiful ways that Christians have shared faith, where family members have heard this message, and generations of people have received this message, and this word of Jesus has spread around the globe. There's been beautiful ways this has happened. But there has also been hard and terrible ways in which Christianity has been forced upon people. There have been wars and crusades where people were forced to either convert or to die. Now, that is never what Jesus intended for his mission, and those are not the words that he gave his disciples to share with the world. Jesus says to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins in his name to all nations. These are two really important words at the center of Jesus' mission, repentance and forgiveness. The word repentance means to turn back, retracing one's steps in order to return to the right way. The name of the book that has Kevin's story and a number of other Irish, Irish soldiers' stories is called About Face. And About Face is a military command to make an immediate 180 degree turn. So this word repentance, meaning to turn around, is paired with forgiveness. Forgiveness means to send away, to cover, to wipe away. When God forgives or absorbs our sins, we are released from being crushed by them. But I always have to say what forgiveness does not mean. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting. Forgiveness does not mean excusing a wrong that's been done. Forgiveness does not mean explaining it away. But forgiveness is the way that God has chosen to bring healing to our lives and salvation to the world. The message of forgiveness and repentance isn't something we tell other people to do or force on them. It's something that we are called to do. Before we start proclaiming something, we should start practicing it. Being people who are willing to repent, to turn around when we mess up. Being people who are willing to offer forgiveness to others when they mess up. If Christians actually practiced repentance and forgiveness, as well as proclaiming it, Christians might be known differently in this world. So often, the words that are used to describe Christians by non-Christians are judgmental and hypocritical. Those are words we've earned. We've earned those words. But that wasn't Jesus' mission. What if us, in practicing repentance and giving forgiveness, we came to be known as humble, as honest, trustworthy, as people who are willing to accept responsibility for their actions, as people who are willing to be healers, to extend compassion, to build relationships rather than destroy them. Now that to me sounds like a great commission. That actually is the great commission. That is foundational to our faith. That is what Jesus asked us to do all along. And we get the opportunity to live into that, to be people who have experienced the presence of Jesus in a powerful way and who are willing to lead by our example of confessing when we've messed up and forgiving others when they mess up so that the world can see who Jesus really is. <laughs>